Fear not, it's not the logo for the latest dreadful superhero remake movie from Marvel. This is something much more useful. You see, we have a problem as pilots. We can get places at super fast speed, but then what do we do when we get there? David Shelton was working on flying cars and today came up with something much more simple. Why not stick a motorbike under your plane? So we designed a pod to do it. One of the main benefits is there's a lot more airports that you can utilize. Uh, uh, half the airports out there don't have ground transportation, so I can pick any airport on the map, go there, and reliably drive to where I'm going. And um, it also saves a lot of time. It's a lot quicker than renting a car or waiting for a taxi. So, you know, my neighbor has a Cirrus and he's got about 10 knots on me, and that, that saves him a few minutes in flight. But I oftentimes save 20 or 30 minutes on the ground. I can land at a closer airport and hit the roads right away. And he lands someplace else further away, and he's got to spend 20 minutes renting a car. So if we you know, race to a restaurant, I can finish a whole meal before he even gets there with his faster airplane. But what about flying cars? They sound a lot easier, don't they? No winching, no attaching? Well, I've been interested in rotable aircraft from, uh, for a long time, and they've been trying to make rotable airplanes since, oh, 1918 or so, and there's been about 100 different designs. But if your airplane has to carry around a bunch of car bits and pieces and vice versa, you wind up with a compromised vehicle, and it's not really a specialized car or a specialized airplane, so you tend to lose about half your performance and double the price. Okay, great idea, but fitting that big cargo pod is going to turn your aircraft from being as streamlined as a Ferrari into something more akin to a hillbilly truck, surely. Well, when the motorcycle's in the pod, the, the pod is shaped right, and um, so on the RV-10, for example, we lose about 5% of our airspeed and cruise, uh, but it looks like a big pod, and it has a lot of what we call wetted area, but it's also covering up a lot of area on the bottom of the fuselage, so the net increase, if you do it right, uh, doesn't add a whole lot of drag, and the flight characteristics remain almost identical as far as trim and handling goes. But there is another thing bugging me. How do you get a heavy motorcycle attached to your aircraft for a long flight without finding that it dropped off halfway along the route? Well, what, one of the keys to our cargo pod is uh, it has a built-in winch system. So it's attached to the airplane with just uh, uh, four pins, and you just pull the pins and winch the whole pod down to the ground. And I like to cheat. I use a, a cordless drill to drive the winch. So it's a, it just takes a moment. And then the whole thing rolls out from underneath the airplane. So... Uh, that, you know, my motorcycle weighs 220 pounds and uh, the winch system means I don't have to lift it up at all. It's really easy. Um, just takes a couple minutes to get the bike out and be on my way. And it looks like you can carry just about anything in there too, including children you don't want annoying you in the cockpit. Admittedly, I made that last bit up, but you get the point. It, it, it's interesting because pilots are always focused on airspeed, how fast their airplane is. Uh, but a few years back, NASA did some studies on personal air vehicles and they started looking at the whole trip and they were looking in terms of door-to-door -door trip speed and that's what really counts when you're trying to go someplace and they found uh, the traditional approach of trying to increase the aircraft speed is not very effective because the real delays take place on the ground.